In this video, I'm going to show you how to make classic house music in the style of Frankie Knuckles, Louis Vega, Marshall Jefferson, and Kerry Chandler. So this is what we're going to create in today's tutorial. I'm going to show you every step of the process, including selecting the right sounds, composing the bass, the beats, the chords, and even choosing the right vocals for the track. And as usual, if you want, you can download this project file, all the samples completely free below this video. A quick shout out to our Accelerator student Leopard Step, who fulfilled a lifelong dream of 20 years and got signed to G Mafia Records recently. Awesome work, Gabe. We're super proud of you, man. So let's get to it. How to make classic house. Well, it all really comes down to the vibe of the track you're creating. And if you're using classic house sounds, then you're already going to be a long way there to creating the sound that you want. Now, back in the day when the classic house scene started coming out, there were a few tools that the guys used that are going to impart that sound for you. Now, the first of which is a classic drum machine. There are a couple of options here. You can either use the Roland TR707 sounds, which is what I'm going to be using today, or you could use the Roland 909 sounds as well. They are also popular in house music. We are looking at the 1989 type vibe today. Also, there are a couple of synths you can use but they're very expensive to buy and you don't need to because you can create those sounds in the soft synths that you already own. Having said that, if you use the Arturia plugins, they are a great way to get that classic sound. Now you've got the classic Roland TB303 sound, which is very popular in Acid House. And you've also got the Roland Juno 106. There are more synths as well, like the Roland Jupiter. But as I said, if you are going for that classic house sound, Arturia makes some fantastic synths that are gonna help you get that sound. So back in the day, these guys were using samplers they were using synths and we're going to combine those two things together today and create some of that old school authenticity. Okay, without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Okay, so let's do it. I don't have a magic list today, so I'm going to be doing this completely on the fly. So the first thing we want to do is select a classic house tempo. 123 BPM is absolutely fine. And then instead of using a separate kick channel, I want to try and process everything the same way that those guys did as well to give it more of that old school feel. So I'm just going to go into my Ableton packs and you can download this drum essentials thing from Ableton. I can't remember whether it costs money or not, but there are these different classic drum machines. So we've got the 707. That's what I'm going to be using today. So I'm just going to drag that in to my drum channel and start things off by just programming in that classic house beat 4-4 on the kick drum. So let's have a listen and find a kick drum. Okay, here we go. We're going to go the 707 kick. Boom, 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 boom on every beat. There we go. And let's just take this down so we don't have any clipping on the channel, on the master channel. Cool. Next thing I want to do is root a little bit of reverb to each of these drums as well. Now, this is probably not what they did because it wasn't possible back then, but this actually will help enhance the sound. So I've created a room reverb on an auxiliary channel, just a short reverb with a short decay time, boosted up the volume a bit in Ableton, uh, and then just taken out some of the low end. I'll probably take out some of the high end as well, but I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb to this kick drum, which is not something I would usually do, but again, I want to get some of that old school feel. So to do that, I'm gonna open up this drum machine. Let's see, I need to open up the routing as well. So I press this button, then I open up the return, create return chain, and just select the rack output as my normal reverb which you'll be able to select from this drop down menu now i can close that up and press this send button and now you can see i can add a little bit of room reverb to any of the drums within my drum machine so let's go to that kick drum add a little bit of reverb cool and i'm just going to take out some of the high end of that reverb cool next thing we want to do is get the classic clap sound Again, on every other beat, every other kick, simple like that. And we can just copy and paste that. Like so. And we're going to take this down in volume a little bit. We don't want that too loud. And now I'm going to double that up with a snare as well. Let's just make look a bit neater so grab those now with the snare i'm going to do little skip beats on the 16th 
So if we choose 16th on the grid, just before every new bar. In fact, I like it there. And let's add some reverb to those. And then let's add one there and there as well. And now next thing I'm going to add is a classic rim shot. This is a very housey sound. So let's find the rim shot here. Um, there we go. Now the way to add these again, all in the 16th, that's where the magic happens. So I've just got one on the second 16th and before the next kick. Like so. It's pretty cool. Don't want to make it too complicated. And let's add some reverb to that as well. So we're already getting that classic housey sound. Now we want to add in the open hat. So in between every kick, nice and simple. So they're quite gnarly samples, you know, they're not super clean but it just helps impart that vibe, that vibe. We'll sort out the levels a bit later. And now let's add some closed hats as well. Again, on those 16ths, this is gonna interplay with the open hat. And what we've got set up by default with these drum machines is what's called a MIDI choke. So every time this open hat plays, if you then bring in a closed hat, it's going to stop that hi hat, that open hi hat playing, just like a real drum kit. And this was very popular in classic drum machines. And it also imparts a feeling of reality because with a real drum kit, every time the closed hat's played, it means that the open hat has to be shut down. So let's just add some of these beats on the 16th and we can also change the velocity of the notes just to add a little bit more interest by making them slightly different volume cool so let's just copy and paste those like so duplicate 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 I'm going to add that double skip to the end, actually. That's going to be a better place to add them. Cool. OK, now let's create the bass line and then we're going to add a little bit of groove to all this as well. Just some swing. But uh, what I'm going to do for the bass line is actually use the wavetable in Ableton. You could use the Jupiter 106 Arturia synth and I'm going to be using that very shortly. But I actually want to show you how to just drag in a nice bass sound that's going to work for house music. So it's one that already comes with it. It's called the Basic FM House Bass. I'm going to turn the FM down a little bit, the FM down amounts down and let's just draw in this bass line that's too high and we're going to turn the volume down as well so we don't deafen everyone and all on these 16ths again Nice, let's just duplicate it. And with this kind of music, there aren't big chord changes, you know, it's all about just getting that groove going with a relatively simple repetitive bass line. And then you can change the chords underneath it, but it's not like trance, you know, it's not like progressive house. It's all about the groove. That's quite cool. It might be a bit low. So what I'm gonna do is use it higher up because I prefer the, the sound, I prefer the timbre. And then I'm gonna use a modern technique, which is probably a bit naughty, but you know, if we're using modern equipment, we can still create that classic house sound, but just make it sound even better, even bigger. So I'm going to create a sub bass channel. First, let's get the shape of this sounding good. 
So I think it needs a little bit more release. So I'm going to open up the actual chain. I'm going to go to the amp envelope. I'm going to choose monophonic because it's a bass line. We don't want each bass note running into the next. And just increase the re release. Increase the release, baby. And it's just a smoother, nicer sound. Now with the sub bass, I'm going to load in an operator. Just whatever simple synth, doesn't matter. And we're just going to create a sub bass to go underneath this and give it that low end oomph. So let's turn it down. There we go. I'll tweak the release again, but we need to make sure it's in mono. No voices, one. And that's going to give us that real low end energy. But we have to make sure that we filter out the low end of our mid bass so we're not doubling up the sub frequencies and potentially causing clashing. So let's just. Take everything out under about 120, and then it's just the sub bass which is going to be bringing that energy. Cool, so that's our basic house group. What should we call this? House Frankie Knuckles. Um, we're going to call this Bobby Fingers. Oh, you got Mr. Fingers as well, Bobby Knuckles, Bobby Fingers. Bobby Toes. <sighs> all right, now what we want to do is impart some swing to this before we write in all the chords. No, actually, we'll do that after. Let's write some chords in. So I'm good, just going to go chords, and this is when I am going to delve into using some of the Archeria stuff. And you can, I don't know if it's an affiliate link, but you can click on it and find out more below. It might be, I can't remember if I've got an affiliate link, so whatever. But if it is, then that's what it is. And thank you for supporting the channel or just Google search it if you'd rather not do that. So chords. Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, let's keep it simple, actually. I'm not going to use that yet. I'm just going to use a piano sound uh, just to write the chords. Now, this is D. So I think that this is actually in the key of D minor. Most dance music is in a, in a minor key. So let's just take the volume down. And if we want to draw in chords, I'm going to do this like the chords from Tears, actually. So what we can do is we can hit the scale button. And we can choose a key to work in. We should have done this really before writing in the bass notes because then it would have showed everything's in the same key. But I know I'm going to be writing this track in C major. So if you press the scale button, choose C major and press scale, it's only now showing notes from within the key of C major, which is magic. It's like a really cool template because then you'll never hit a bad note. So let's draw in the bass notes of each of these chords first. And again, I'm working on the 16th. And if you want to learn more about polymeters and polyrhythms, that's going to help explain why I'm doing this. But I'm just shifting the notes to happen just before the beat. And that's going to keep the groove going. Because here, if we change it here, listen to that. Listen, it sounds a bit vanilla. But if we shift this to come in earlier on the an eighth before and then that would be a sixteenth there you can see now it's not happening on the actual beat listen to the groove it gives the track it just keeps that groove going so they're the bass notes of our chords let's just loop that and now if you've got scale mode selected it's easy you can just count up and skip a note each time to build out your chords so this is this is the root note or the first one two three that's the third four five and that's the fifth so this is a standard triad which is nice but we want to create that really housey deep vibe so i'm going to make this into a seventh chord six seven and then a ninth chord eight nine so now we've got this sound which is just lush so let's do that for the other chords as well. Just build them out using the same technique. Skip a note. Two, 
These might sound a bit weird, let's have a listen. So this is diminished, which is why it sounds a little weird. So all you can do for that, you can either move it down or up to the next bit, to the next note within the scale, and it's going to solve that problem. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Who'd have thought? Hey. And what I'm going to do is just add this E here as well, and it's just going to give it more of a jazzy feel. Lovely. Okay, so there are our chords. Now what I'm going to do is use one of the Arturia plugins to try and get that kind of classic housey feel. Now we've got the actual chords written in. So I'm going to go to my Arturia plugins here. And I'm going to... I'm going to try using the Jupiter 6. And the easiest thing to do is just listen through some of the presets as it's playing to try and get the vibe that you want. I'm going to go to keys or piano. Like that sounds pretty classic housey to me. So now let's add some vibe to this. Let's actually impart some more flavor. So first I'm going to add some bongos to this track. That's a classic house thing to do. And the way I'm going to do that is I could go to loop cloud, but no, I'm just going to search in my drum loops anyway. And let's listen for some congas or bongos. Nothing too crazy. Um, okay, what I'm going to do, I don't have it. Oh, that's quite cool. Okay, that might be a bit much, but I'm going to drop, drop it in anyway and just have it quite quiet. No, that adds a vibe. Maybe let's move these down an octave. Now I prefer it up an octave. Right, next thing we want to do is add some groove to this. Let me know if you're enjoying this so far. Give me a hell yeah or an Amen Brother if you're feeling holy. And let me know in the comments as well, what do you want to see me cover next? But now let's get some of that groove in there. So what I'm going to do is open up the groove pool. So we go grooves. And the one I tend to use most simplest is Swing Logic or Swing MPC. Uh, it doesn't really matter which, to be honest. S although MPC is going to give you a slightly more authentic groove. Can't find it though, so let's just forget this ever happened, shall we? I'm just going to drag in that. It's going to be absolutely fine. And now let's apply this to our drums and see what happens. So at the moment, we've got this. Now if we put this swing on it, let's hear what happens. We just add that swing. So that's a bit too hard, I think. So I'm just going to dial in a little bit. But once we've done that, we have to make sure we apply it to everything. Otherwise, it's all going to sound slightly off. Just adds a little bit of swing. And we will mix this as well. But next thing we want to do is add some classic house vocals. Now, one of the kings of classic house vocals has to be the esteemed Robert Owens. And thankfully, we can actually find some Robert Owen vocals on Loop Cloud. Um, let me just color this the natural color of drums in nature, which is green, because drums grow like the grass. That's the way I remember it. Honest. Um, so let's open up Loop Cloud. Now this is in C major. We just need to search for vocals in a major key. We can always transpose. 
which key it's in. So I know there's a Robert Owen sa sample pack here. So if I can actually type properly. Uh, here we go, Robert Owens, Voice of House Music. Okay, so I found a vocal by Robert Owens and it's actually in A minor, but, well, no, it's actually in B minor, but our track is in C major. Now, if we look at our notes here, we've got C major, the relative minor key of C major is A, A minor. So if we count up one, two, three, four, five, that means that A minor uses the exact same notes as C major, which is all the white keys from A up to A. Now, if we can transpose this vocal in B minor to A minor, then it's going to work with our track because the intervals between each note is the same. So here's B minor. If we take off scale, right, there's B and A is two semitones below that. So if we go to our vocal and just warp it and then take it down two semitones, this vocal is now in A minor, and because it's A minor, it's going to work with our track, which is in the key of C major. Now, I know that might sound a bit professor, so you can check out my music theory for EDM producers, which is going to explain these things in more detail. But let's just have a listen to this vocal now. Through each and every chapter, fate has kept me strong. that classic house vocal. Now we've got the basics of this track. There are a few other things we want to do now. We want to mix it, but before that, I'm gonna add some strings, some high strings. You have gotta have some high strings. Now, a really good plugin for strings is Labs Spitfire Audio, because they've got some free sounds in there. So I'm gonna use one of the strings here. I'm gonna use Strings Ensemble, and I'm gonna use Long. And all we're going to do is just have one sustained note, and that is a classic housey sound as well. So using these same techniques that they used to use. So let's just find that note. And it's probably going to be on the C, because this is in the key of C. Is that a mosquito? No, good. I don't know, actually. No, it's not. Okay, I'm actually going to have it on the third, which is the E, because that's going to sound better. Each and, every chapter. and actually, let's move it up as well. Through each and every chapter. So this is what we're going to do. We're just going to duplicate this, add some reverb, and this is going to be our sound bed. Through each and every chapter. I'm going to kill this now. So I'm just going to add that top note and then we're going to duplicate this. And it's going to give a really nice atmospheric sound bed. So what we're going to do now is mix this track. So I'm going to create a second auxiliary channel with another reverb. I'm going to call this all reverb. And this is going to be a longer reverb. Just with a longer decay time, that's really the only difference. I'm going to increase the volume a bit because the Ableton, Ableton reverbs tend to make things a little quiet. And I'm going to add an EQ to take out the low end so we don't end up with too much mess in the low end. So let's mix this bad boy. First, I'm going to start with the most important elements. I'm going to add more to this track as well. So let's go for the drums. I'm going to start with the kick drum and then bring everything else up underneath it and we're going to add some panning as well. So let's bring in the snare first. The clap as well. I think the clap needs to be higher so I'm going to transpose it. I'm also going to pan the clap slightly. Just add some width in our drums. And now we need to bring in the hats. Where's the open hat? I 
add some reverb. Transpose it. No, let's keep it the same. Now bring in the open hat, pan it. And now the all important rim shot. Oh, we need some ride symbol as well. So let's add some ride symbol. And just duplicate that. So there's our house beat. Now for the bongo drums. Firstly, I'm going to take out the low end because we don't want it cluttering the mix. And now I'm going to add a classic effect. I'm going to use some delay, but I'm going to use the echo unit because that's going to impart a little bit of character to it. So let's put it on ping pong mode. Have a pretty short feedback. Uh, very short feedback actually. That's quite cool. Adds more stereo width to our drums. So when, when we bring it in, Nice. Now, next thing we want to do is add a little bit of atmosphere under this. So I'm going to add this audio crackle. Now, this is a great way to get that old school feel. So I hope you're still watching. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is go to Will's favorites. Now, actually, I'll go to my samples, effects, vinyl crackle. Because all of these old tracks were pressed to vinyl. So they weren't downloadable MP3, uh, they weren't downloadable WAVs, they weren't streamable MP3s, they were all on vinyl. So we want to impart some of that vibe. So we've got that crackle. So that's what we are gonna do. I'm just gonna add that really low underneath the whole mix. And we can just loop it, it's absolutely fine. And now let's just bring in a little bit underneath all the drums and everything. So it's just there underneath. That's with it off. And that's with it on. Now let's add the bass. little bit of reverb to the bass. I think there's some already built into this patch. And the sub bass. Nice. Now bring in the chords. But we're going to add some reverb on the aux channel. Now we don't have the sidechain pump because they didn't use that technique back then. In fact, it wasn't really possible. So we don't want to add too much of that because we want to get that vibe going. Now let's add some effects to Robert's voice. I'm actually going to create our own auxiliary channel for the vocals because you really need to get it right. So I'm just going to choose a reverb 
Let's go to reverb. Let's get that right first. I'm also going to create a secondary auxiliary channel just for the vocals and I'm going to add another echo unit on there just to add a little delay to his voice as well. Now that's a bit naughty because they wouldn't really have had all these effects on there as well. So we could just leave it as, at that. But what I want to do now is actually just add some really nice Juno chords underneath. I'm going, I'm kind of going off on one now, but this is the vibe that we were going for and I think we've achieved it. Yeah, so now let's add some really nice deep chords. I'm gonna just copy this, and this might screw everything up, but hey, it's all about experimentation. So let's take these down an octave. I've just duplicated it up. I'm gonna turn off the reverb on this duplication though, so we don't end up too muddy. <sighs> too nice, too nice. Okay, let's just scroll through some of these pads, because the Juno, 106 has some fantastic pad sounds. So nice. So I'm just gonna use this to richen up the, the low end. So let's just bring this in carefully. Absolute vibes. So there you have it guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this. This was what you requested on the YouTube poll. If you do want to let me know what you want me to cover on this channel, there's a new YouTube poll below this video. Click on the community tab and you can vote, let me know. You can download this project file too and join me in my accelerator program for some one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as loads of other cool stuff. And don't forget, if you like this video, please smash like, share it with your friends and consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. So until next time, thanks for watching, cheers and happy producing. Is it